Hey guys, welcome back um, to our last segment. Um, again, this setup is different than our first one because we are currently at home because there was a freeze and all the roads are ice and they're frozen. They're frozen. Let it go. You would only know if you listen to our last segment. Yep. <laughs> so school is canceled for today, but thank goodness we have technology and Zoom. So we are able to record it here at home. Um, so last segment, um, if y'all tuned in, Sage talked about the Elsa doll. Um, and then obviously I'm going to be doing our last one. I'm going to be doing two. The last one's like a very like mini small one. Um, but um, the first one is the Mandy doll, which is supposed to be Canada's most evil antique. So, <laughs> um, okay. So Mandy the doll has been terrorizing the, I'm probably gonna butcher this, Quesnel and District Museum, where she's been on display since 1991. The antique doll was already 91 years old when she was given to the museum, um, someone who, an anonymous donor. Um, the donor couldn't handle having Mandy in her house anymore. And if you're wondering why, it's because Mandy had begun to do very strange things. If you all search for the doll, like, like I guess it's kind of creepy. It doesn't like irk, like doesn't freak me out too much. It does have like a little like kind of like cracks on her face, and it's just kind of like a baby and like an older, um, because obviously this is like from 1900. So, um. This is what the anonymous donor had said. She said the owner, the owner had began waking up in the middle of the night to the sound of a baby crying, only there was no baby in the quiet house. The bizarre sound would echo up from the halls, from the basement, and oftentimes it was so loud that it couldn't be ignored. Um, once the owner worked up the courage to investigate, she would only find an open window, and the strange sounds were enough to scare her for good, and Mandy was given to the museum because it was the only other thing in the house that would probably make noise since there were no babies. And according to the previous owner, once the doll was no longer in her house, um, the crying stopped. Um, so once Mandy was put on display, strange things began happening to the staff and volunteers at, Quenzel, at Quesnel Museum. Um, lunches would begin disappearing at the fridge only to be found later tucked into drawers, pens, pictures, books, other things like that, display items began disappearing without a trace, many of, what, uh, many of which were never found. Um, and a quote from someone at the museum, they said, Mandy sat facing the public entrance way where visitors would stare and talk about this doll with the cracked and broken face and sinister smile. With time, Mandy was moved to another part of the museum and carefully placed in a case by herself because rumor had it that she should not be placed with the other dolls because she would harm them. In 1999, the museum and Mandy were both featured in the supernatural stories around British Columbia, and it took no time before people began visiting the museum to see the stall, and new guests began to have their own experience, own bizarre experiences with Mandy. Um, kind of um, with one of ours is Robert the Doll, like people would try to take photos of him, and when he was in his case, and the their phones like stopped working. Um, were malfunctioning, but were time when they left the museum. So oftentimes various batteries are drained completely in the presence of the doll. One guest even claimed that Mandy caused the light on her camera to go up about every five seconds, and then when she left the room, it began working again. <clears throat> A number of times guests have reported that Mandy's eyes follow them around the room. I don't like that. Um, <laughs> and some even say she blinked when you're not looking. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. and Mandy's even been known to move around on her own to different display cases Mandy the doll um she draws a lot of visitors to the museum every year obviously because how infamous she was and if you want to see her for yourself she's currently on display at the Quesnel and District Museum archives um and then I have another article that um talked about her so um, we should ultimately we should just make our rounds to all of the museums and see all of these dolls no <laughs> um i don't know i i can't i can't even see a picture of a doll i don't know how i'm gonna see it in the museum yeah i was just kidding <laughs> i'm just kidding 
have you ever been to like because I think there's like horror movie museums or have you ever been to like a haunted site or anything like that I want to say yes just because it seemed like something I would do but I'm real. I can't think of anything off the top of my head I've I been to oh sorry go ahead <laughs> um I've been to the Museum of Unnatural History I don't know if you've heard about that but like no. It's like a mockery museum, a mo- mock museum, I think is what mock they're called. Museum. Yeah, of the Museum of Natural History. So it like, yeah, it has some creepy stuff in it, but I don't really know how creepy I would consider it. Where is it? It's in D.C. Oh, so okay. it's still up in the like Smithsonian area. Mm-hmm. It's just like a museum that's supposed to mock the Museum of Natural History interesting um so i have another article about um mandy um basically the same thing the doll was created between sometime um sometime between 1900 and 1920 um and again the donor remained anonymous and some psychic investigators who have visited mandy state that the doll is most likely possessed by the spirit of a young little girl who just wants attention from people around her and that's why the doll is mischievous and never violent towards humans. Which makes sense. Yeah. I also think it could be a little sexist. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. to think, to like, just be like, oh, she's just a fussy little girl. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think they are only saying that because the doll is like a baby doll. And mm-hmm. those are like linked more towards like youth. Uh huh. Um, but I don't. Ha- that's all like the history that they have behind it. Um, again, it was featured in a magazine. Um, but that's all they know. But um, again, yeah, that's only what psychics would say. So we don't know like how true that is. Psychics uh-huh. sometimes are not really reliable. We've seen that in some of our cases um, <laughs> that we've talked about. But I do have another story. Okay. Um, so we got two in one. Yeah. A two in one, one segment. Yeah. I just found this other one that I thought was kind of interesting to talk about. Mm-hmm. So this article came out on September 20th, um, 2021. So this one is probably the most recent one out of all the ones. Well, actually, no, that's a lie. Oh, the, well, the yeah, Keller one. Yeah. The Keller, that's a lie. The Keller um, one was the most recent because it happened like February of this year. Yeah. But all of our other ones have been like 1900s or the other one was 2018. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> you know, we've got some very like times, but yeah, so this is like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so again, this article came out September 20th of 2021. And yeah, I'll just get into it. <clears throat> so this one's pretty short and it's just. This one's about um, a new homeowner who was um, given a housewarming gift to this doll and all that entails. So a new homeowner was greeted with a housewarming gift that would give some people chills. Jonathan Lewis told the Liverpool Echo after getting the keys to his new house that he started exploring the place, which included a space under the stairway that had been sealed with drywall. The previous owners had a refrigerator in that area where there was now a wire coming out of the wall. The 32-year-old English school teacher got a hammer and decided to check it out. Mm -hmm. Um, He said he knocked through a wall about the size of his fist, shone a light in it, and there was just a doll sitting there. No. (laughs) And then he said, upon further, um, and then upon further um, examination, he realized a rag doll was holding a handwritten note addressed to the new homeowner. Okay, so the previous homeowner definitely set this up. Yeah. Um, so it says, thank you for freeing me. My name is Emily. My original homeowners lived in this house in 1961. I didn't like them, so they had to go. All they did was sing and be merry. It was sickening. Stabbing was my choice of death for them, so I hope you have knives. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Um, and then I don't know how to screen share on here (laughs) but the doll is like it's an older kind of raggedy ann kind of style doll Mm -hmm. it's like 
it has like it has yellow like yarn hair and like an older outfit and it's like shows like the room and it's like it's just like a very like small like nothing like huge uh-huh. um and then the photo before that just shows like the, the hole he knocked in the wall which um does this doll have a name emily emily and then the letter ended with i hope you sleep well with a drawing of a smiley face with two letter x's for eyes <laughs> That sounds like something I would do. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> um, so while Lewis and some of his friends found it creepy, he thought it was just a funny prank. He found it funny. <laughs> he said, some of my friends have told me to put my house back on the market and move out, but I think it's just a laugh. And he called it hilarious. The home, the home is located in Liverpool's um, Walton neighborhood where former Balm ball former beetle paul mccartney was born and walton moved in and walton became a part of the city in in 1895 oh my goodness so yeah it doesn't say anything about him like having moved out or anything i think he was just like oh <laughs> that's so funny let me just continue living. Like, yeah he was like ha funny story okay i would be freaked out even if it was a joke like i don't know I, I found would, a photo I of the doll. I would sleep with one eye open. One eye open when I'm sleeping. That's what the doll looks like. <laughs> like, the doll isn't creepy, but if I were to just knock down a wall and I saw that, uh, yeah, I would I would jump a little bit. I would... Oh, and she's holding the note in this photo, too. Yeah. And it, <laughs> ending with, I hope you sleep well. <laughs> I hope you have hearts. Uh, not hearts. I hope you have <laughs> knives. XX. LOL. <laughs> I don't know because it says um it says my original owners lived in this house in 1961 and by looking about how old that doll was it could have been placed by them but the like the most like previous recently previous owners they said they just had like a fridge there and then there was a wire sticking out so maybe it was older because like I don't know I think it could have been the previous I think it could have been like the because I don't know how many years. people have lived there over the years, but it could have been like the after 1961 or before, or mm-hmm. I guess the first people that lived there. Yeah. <laughs> I would probably move out immediately if I saw that. I would I'd be, probably, yeah, I'd be freaked out. <laughs> I probably would try to burn the doll or throw away the doll, and then we'd have an Elsa doll situation. Yeah, where it just keeps coming back. <laughs> yes. I think that would happen because dolls, they love to go back to where they come from, you know? Mm -hmm. And what's even creepier, it's like, it's like a mini room. Like, obviously, like, you couldn't, like, put things in there, but maybe it was, like, an area, like, cut out, like, to push in a fridge. I don't know. Oh, that could be that. And then they just maybe, like, just sealed it up. Yeah. So freaky. So then how did the maybe they just let the doll in there and then they like patched up the wall they're like yeah you can go in there have fun <laughs> but i don't i don't i don't understand like how he just played off as a joke like i don't know i'm i'm very creeped out by like older dolls like that like yes like annabelle is scary because she's like creepy looking but like actual old like cre- like robert depends. robert Stop. looked so I not shouldn't even speak. speak that name. How dare you? <laughs> he who shall not be named. <laughs> yeah, he just felt like a censor bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope y'all enjoyed our final segment of our at home um, part. Um, if y'all enjoyed listening to this, we do have a whole podcast, um, of course, the audio. Um, but you can listen to on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, any other listening platform um, where we just talk about true crime, murder cases, stuff like that. We've never talked about dolls. This is our first time talking about dolls. Um, but yeah, we post about normally about every Friday. It's been kind of crazy because we've had, we had a four day weekend. We've had, this is our second time we have had school canceled because of ice or snow. Um, But I hope y'all enjoyed this segment and hope y'all are enjoying the stream.
Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>